Some things just never turn out as planned. When Jim Richer came to NC State from a small town in Ohio, he thought he might have a chance to be a pretty good defensive end or linebacker, just as he had been in high school. On the first day of practice, however, new Wolfpack coach Bo Ryan moved the young player to center, a position he knew little about. It wasn't a, play, a, a position that I exactly wanted to play. I, um, I had told him, you know, I, that's not a position that, that uh, when you're playing backyard football that, that uh, anyone wants to play. You usually put your little sister there to snap the ball to people that could actually play football. The late Ryan, however, knew a thing or two about potential. And he also knew about the vaunted beer offense NC State had run with such success under his predecessor, Lou Holtz, and how the quick and agile Richard would operate as a lead blocker in the Wolfpack's scheme. He could slip around nose tackles and get to backside linebackers. Right behind him was running back Ted Brown, the ACC's all-time leading rusher, and another inductee in the inaugural class of the NC State Athletics Hall of Fame. He was strong, he was quick, he was athletic, I mean, he was smart. So, I mean, what more you need in, in the line? I mean, calling out all the defenses, calling out every, every play, helping us in the backfield to know what, when they slanting down, when they slanting out, what the formation, and that, where the strong, where the weak, what linebackers are, and calling out all those different things that he had to, to remember and know, which he did very, very well. Like other great athletic combos, it's hard to say who was the cause of the other's success. Both went on to have excellent NFL careers. Richer with the Buffalo Bills and Brown with the Minnesota Vikings. There is little doubt, however, that Ryan made the right move, sending Richer to the offensive side of the ball. I think it was Pat Dye who was the coach at East Carolina and subsequent to that, the coach at Auburn said, Jim Richer is the best college football player that ever put on the pads at center. And that's a pretty good compliment. And he was the prototype player and very quick when we ran a Veer offense and he would do the great things that uh, helped Ted Brown gain a lot of those yards. In 1979, Richard not only won his second consecutive consensus All-American honor, he also won the Outland Trophy as the best interior offensive lineman in the country. Humble to a fault, Richard only wished all of his teammates could have shared in his honors with him. Jim Richer had tremendous leverage. I mean, he, uh, he wasn't all that tall, six feet two, but he had tremendous ability to get leverage. And, in, and anybody knows anything about offensive line play, if you've got leverage, you've got the advantage. The College Football Hall of Fame inductee had an even more remarkable professional career. He played 16 seasons with the Bills and the Atlanta Falcons. Incredible longevity for an offensive lineman. He played in four Super Bowls and is in the Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame as well as the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Still, Richer is unconvinced that he deserves his most recent honor. Being in inducted into the first class was, um, or at any time, is, is unbelievable. I feel a little unworthy about um, being in the first class. I, I think of Dick Christie and, and, and some of the great players um, that have played at NC State as far as football um, alone, but you know, you talk about some of the, the, the great coaches and, and great athletes that have come through NC State. Um, you know, I, I'm just thrilled about it. My family's thrilled about it. And, um, but like I said, maybe uh, there's a, a feeling of a little unworthiness. And as I said before, um, how you know, I feel like football is such a team sport.